Hey everybody, it's Crypto Anarchist here, and I'm bringing you guys another video on cryptocurrencies. In today's video, I'm going to just be dis discussing an interview that Craig Wright gave. And the reason I want to discuss this interview is because Craig Wright usually talks way over people's heads. He has such good information. Um, if you can understand what he's saying, and he, it's hard to follow him because he's he's a bit odd, um, to say the least. Um, Socially, he's a bit odd, which is sort of normal for people who are geniuses, but it's it's sometimes hard to follow him because he, what he's talking about is not always what the person is asking a question about. Sometimes they're on different wa wavelengths, you know, sometimes they're on different pages. But this was an interview he did with uh, Vin Armani, which I thought was really good. Uh, you can watch the full thing if you want to. Uh, the interview starts at uh, an hour and nine minutes into the uh, video, but... <clears throat> Anyways, a couple of these points that he gave, I really wanted everyone to uh, understand. Um, so the, f the first point he gives, and, and there's a ton of points that, like, a ton of really big points that he gives all in a row. Like, he just f he just throws out such good information so quickly, uh, and I feel like a lot of people should really uh, pay more attention to him. But anyways, um, at 109, Craig says, uh, he, he's asked, you know, what what is the value of Bitcoin Cash? Because... The host, Vin Armani, is like, I don't understand what value Bitcoin SegWit has if it's not used in, like, if it's not trying to be used in transactions. What's the value of cryptocurrency from? And Craig responds, he's like, you know, the value of crypto comes from its liquidity. And what he, what he means by that is the more things you can use cryptocurrency to buy, the higher its price is. And this is kind of a fundamental um, identity of economics. The, the price of money is all of the goods that money can purchase um, so like you know the US dollar it can be used to purchase most anything so the total um, total market cap of the US dollar is much higher than the market cap of any other currency in the world and that's because it's the most liquid currency in the world okay and the next point that he makes is actually very interesting and it's something I've never really thought about too much before but when he says uh, money is actually liquidity um, the commodity that is used to value that money is just a unit of measure and so what he's saying is that um, liquidity has always been needed you always needed to spend money and things like this and he talks about what he goes telly sticks and uh, he basically says that the beginning of money is basically just like it's like calculators basically like you know an abacus where you would just basically count how much how much you owed so or how much you paid someone how much they owed you things like that and eventually they ended up using gold and silver as units of measure for money so gold and silver silver work best as these units of measure but money is liquidity and liquidity is always needed so money you know it didn't start as gold and silver it's always been liquidity first and then you use the best unit of measure for that liquidity um, moving on he moves on towards uh, talking about cash zero confirmation uh, transactions and they're more secure than credit cards just so you guys know um, that's what like instant transactions within cryptocurrencies like I think dash says they have instant transactions that's just zero confirmation transactions okay uh, there's only a couple cryptocurrencies that can't do zero confirmation transactions I think ZK snark cryptocurrencies they can do zero confirmation transactions but they're not really instant because it takes a while for them to to uh, process I think it takes like 180 seconds um, but you know anything that has replaced by fee is not zero confirmation transactions they're not instant transactions but anything that does not have replaced by fee it should basically be instant transactions so I see a lot of I know I was on the uh, Zcoin Reddit page a while back, and they were asking about instant transactions from Dash and how could Zcoin compete. And unless I'm wrong, Zcoin has the same instant transactions that Dash does, basically. Uh, unless I'm wrong, like it takes it takes a couple seconds or whatever for the network to accept the transaction. But once it's on there, as long as you have the first come first serve rule, rule, like that's the transaction that goes through. So zero, that's a zero confirmation transaction. Now. I don't believe that you can spend this zero confirmation transaction, but what it allows you to do is when you get a new transaction from somebody, like if you're, if you get a new uh, incoming transaction in Bitcoin Cash, that means you can trust that you're going to get that money, so you can actually send out other money that you have in order to, you know, pay debts and whatnot, knowing that you have new money coming in. So that's why you need zero confirmation transactions because it allows you to just have more liquidity. Um, yeah, and he he talks he talks about this more. He, he 
uh, at 113, he says it's the, the money transfer in Bitcoin Cash uh, or anything that doesn't have a replace by fee. It's instant. It's the settlement that is 10 minutes. So just so you guys know, settlement is when you like settlements when the money's actually moved so like in the past you would use uh, settlement banks with gold and so you would you know you'd use cash or checks or whatever and then it's only every once in a while that the bank would settle accounts and move the gold where it needed to be um, and just so you guys know the settlement time for credit cards and uh, a lot of these things that banks use they can be months okay so it's months in terms of settlement time, Bitcoin Cash is 10 minutes. A lot of people are like, how do I use this? It's not instant. I have to wait 10 minutes for confirmation. That's 10 minutes for settlement. You have instant money transfer with, with any cryptocurrency that doesn't have replaced by fee. Um, the next point that he makes at 115 is actually, uh, it's an interesting point that most people don't really realize, but small nodes actually reduce network security as a whole because in order to make the network workable the small nodes it has to be less efficient and the less efficient the network is the more likely that um, you know the block can orphan and things like that so small nodes like it, it reduces network security as a whole although and I've said this a million times but if you're running a node yourself it increases the security of your funds slightly like it's better to run a full node rather than not um, if you want more security but they don't actually increase like a lot of people say if you run a small node you're helping out the network you're really not because if you're not a miner even if you see a bad transaction there's nothing you can do to stop it it's only miners who have the power to change blocks so it's only miners that matter it's only miners that do anything for the security of the network if you run a node yourself you increase you can increase your own security but you don't help the network whatsoever um, I'm not saying don't run full nodes I always run full nodes but it's not like you know I'm not a miner I'm not I'm not helping the network um, and then here at 117 this is a uh, I really love when he talks about this because uh, he, he mentions this I don't know specifically if he mentions this in this video but Craig has mentioned before how in eight years if Bitcoin and he's talking about Bitcoin cash when he says Bitcoin but if Bitcoin cash or any other cryptocurrency or Bitcoin I guess if they do not grow enough that they will be in danger of dying because it has to get big enough in order to have the fees give enough of an incentive for the miners to uh, to keep mining to mine honestly and he says uh, the problem is now is that with shorts uh, if you do a 51% attack and I, I've talked about this before like in uh, how to do a 51% attack to kill the network I never thought about doing it with shorts because shorts weren't actually available when uh, I made those videos but Craig's like all you have to do to do a 51% attack is shut the network off with a DOS attack a denial of service attack which is what I said you would have to do if you wanted to kill Bitcoin or something like that I said do a DOS a 51% attack DOS the network and as you release your own coin but what he actually says you should do if you're trying to kill the Bitcoin network is you do a 51% attack and then you short the, you short the uh, coin um, because the whole reason why you short the coin is you can actually uh, make a lot like you can make a shitload of money you can make more money than Bitcoin is worth by shorting the coin um, and so if you short the coin and do a 51% attack you killed the network and you've pros profited massively off of it okay so all you have to do to kill a coin is to profit off a 51% attack so if you can do a 51% attack and short the network that that cryptocurrency is over and so he talks about how this is uh, this is sort of an issue because you know if you're gonna have a 51% attack it'll probably happen within like eight years or so or after eight years because that's when the first crisis hits Bitcoin where if it's not big enough it's not really gonna succeed um, so I just thought that was really interesting and I especially thought it was interesting because a lot of people say Bitcoin can't be hacked and I keep telling you guys it can and you can make a lot of money off it if you do it right and so you know Craig Wright said the exact same thing he said the exact same thing um, it's not easy to do obviously and you have to hope that the cryptocurrency sort of fails one thing that I think is really interesting about him talking about doing shorting the network while doing a 51 percent attack uh, you'd have to have a lot of money in order to short a network like that so who could actually short the network 
Well, Craig Wright has a huge Bitcoin fortune. Um, he also is moving to Iceland. He's building supercomputers in Iceland. He's going to have like the, a supercomputer more powerful than anything the NSA has. And he's going to Iceland to build mining rigs, basically. I think he might be working with Calvin Ayers. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, but Calvin Ayers is trying to get into Bitcoin mining, and he says he's going to be the biggest Bitcoin miner in 2018. I don't really know if uh, those two are working together. But they could be, and he could be planning on shorting Bitcoin Segway and making a shitload of money and then putting that money into Bitcoin Cash. Who really knows? But... Uh, Anyways, moving on, uh, they sort of ask about, you know, what is, what is cryptocurrency's use as well? Number one, it's used for international transfers. If you look at Bitcoin Cash and international transfers, they're instant. They basically cost no money. Um, you know, it's, it's the best sort of way to do international transfers. There's not rules and regulations for it. You know, you just send the money and that's it. Um, 127 he talks about how the smart contracts allow coin shuffle uh, they've already came out with that they've come out with cash shuffle and he's just talking about how cat with using bitcoin cash like there's a lot more things that you can do um he goes to 130 and he starts talking about how on uh, bitcoin segwit on bitcoin segwit <laughs> They're planning to use side chains, siphon fees and powers from the miners because it takes fees and it moves them from the miners to the side chains. But the miners are the ones securing the network. Now I've said this a million times, and a lot of times nobody nobody believes me. You know, they're like, no, 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 you still eventually pay money to the miners. And it's like, yeah, but you're still paying money to other people that should have been going to the miners. So you are siphoning money from the miners. Now the one thing he doesn't talk about with um, you know, Bitcoin Segwit and how the fees siphon power from the miners. He doesn't talk about how it's actually a fractionally reserved system. I mean, he sort of does when he says the side chains make it sort of like a fractional reserve system because you're not giving power to the miners, but he doesn't specifically say how, you know, one transaction on the Bitcoin Segwit blockchain with Lightning can equal a thousand transactions off chain. So you're actually fractionalizing the blockchain like that. And so you're trying to stretch the blockchain out to be more than it can be. And he doesn't talk about how you can, uh, you know, force a bank run on that coin. Although, you know, if he if he understands that you can DOS the network and short it, I under, I would almost assume, you know, he understands with the Bitcoin Lightning network out, if you DOS the network, you can force people's channels to close without them getting paid the right amount. So I would assume he knows that. He just doesn't talk about it here. Um, at 134, he talks about the patents that he's trying to uh, trying to get for uh, his work on. And he says he's going to give his patents away to Bitcoin Cash, basically. So he's going to try and patent a bunch of work that he is doing and give that those patents away only to Bitcoin Cash. Now, depending on what he's doing, this could be a big thing for Bitcoin Cash. Uh, I'm an anarchist, so patents to me, it's like, yeah, I don't really, I'm, I'm not a big believer in intellectual property. Um, but... It'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, here at 135, this is where, yeah, before I told you guys, he, he said you could 51% attack a cryptocurrency and uh, short it and make a shitload of money. At 135 is when he says, uh, in 2025, Bitcoin will face an existential threat. If it's not big enough, it's going to fail. Like, that's a fact, because the block reward will not be large enough. And that's a fact. This goes back to also uh, why he keeps saying a cap limit on any sort of cryptocurrency is retarded because if he, they just you know had the block reward stay steady at like you know two three percent there would be no existential threat to bitcoin you would never pay high fees you know fees would always be almost zero uh, and this just wouldn't exist but that's just part of the way that the thing goes so after you know once 2025 hits you may consider getting out of bitcoin cash but you know that's a while till that gets here um, the, the final point, though, that he makes here is that uh, blockchain auditability is a check on tyranny. So uh, one reason that Craig Wright, and this is actually true with Satoshi's writings as well, you know, is Craig Wright Satoshi? There's a lot, I mean, they're very similar people, um, but I don't really know. But uh, both Craig Wright and Satoshi said that... Um, Part of the reason that pseudonymity was good for Bitcoin was because then governments and big, huge institutions, like if they're moving money around, you can kind of figure it out to some extent and you can see it on the blockchain. And so there's like you can audit them and it's all on the blockchain and they can't hide it. They can't lie about it. There's nothing they can do to, to get away if it's all on the blockchain. Um, and so the blockchain auditability he says it's a check on tyranny. So things like Monero, you can't really used to as a check on tyranny anything that doesn't have blockchain auditability you can't really use as a 
check on tyranny. That was just an interesting point that I never really thought about too much. I still like privacy coins, but you know, I've always liked privacy coins with a lot of blockchain audit ability. Um, so anyways, I hope you guys uh, sort of learned some things from these points that I talked to you guys about from Craig Wright. I hope you guys watched this video. Craig's a really smart guy. Uh, one of the reasons I really like Craig is because he basically says, like, he talks about cryptocurrencies in the same way I do. You know, whenever I bring up you can 51% attack Bitcoin, everyone's like, no, it's impossible and you lose a lot of money. It's like, no, you can make a shitload of money doing a 51% attack if you do it right. You know, Craig says the same things. I kept saying, you know, once the the block reward gets low enough on Bitcoin, it's going to face an existential threat and you could kill it. Craig says the same thing. You know, even though the community doesn't understand it, Craig does. Like, Craig really understands this shit. He really understands it. So I hope you guys pay a little bit more attention uh, to him. But there will be more videos uh, on crypto com cryptocurrencies coming out from me uh, here soon. So I hope you enjoy this one.